Saturday 20th June, Uganda will join the rest of the world to commemorate the International Refugee Day. Uganda hosts close to 1.4 million refugees from 31 nationalities, with 65% of them coming from South Sudan, 30% from DRC, and 3.5% from Burundi. These refugees, according to Ugandan policies, have been provided with land to cultivate and settle, health care, basic primary education, and peaceful existence. The COVID-19 lockdown period affected mostly the urban refugees who had to look for food and acquire protective gear like masks, sanitizers and soap to protect themselves from COVID-19. requested UNHCR, my brother Joel, to provide the PPEs, the personal protective equipment to all our refugee settlements so that we, 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 we ensure that there is safety and protection of our persons of concern and our clientele from the from the from the from the COVID-19 uh, uh, disease we have also ensured that uh, social distancing is observed as the world celebrates refugee day Uganda has 44 refugees who tested positive with COVID-19 out of the 872 in quarantine these are in Bidbidi Yumbe and in Achivale refugee camps. Solution centers and quarantine spaces have been reactivated in all our refugee settlements to manage suspected COVID-19 cases. COVID-19 challenges where 872 refugees have been quarantined from different settlements in the country with already 44 testing positive Efforts are being put to ensure that there is a continuous delivery of critical services such as food, health and other forms of assistance in various refugee settlements. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees, representative to Uganda, says they have reduced all services to refugees, including food relief, by 30%. World Food Programme only provides 70% of food relief. In September, what happens? Well, if we don't have additional resources for education around $10 million, say, we may have to totally discontinue financing the over 4,000 teachers that we pay. It, it would be tragic, but we may not have a choice. Because what happened with the COVID pandemic is that already our resources were very much uh, uh, restrained, constrained. We had to reprogram to prioritize new unplanned activities to take care of the response to the, to the COVID-19. So it took away from key sectors what already the very scarce resources we had. So now we're faced indeed with a situation where by come September, if we no more resources, we'll have a serious problem with education, with health and other key you know, component of our support to the refugees and the host communities. According to the Minister for Disaster Preparedness, Engineer Hilaro Nick, there is no massive outbreak of COVID-19 in refugee settlement, though people enter through border districts and mingle with refugees and notices. On the resource constraint issue, Engineer Onek says, government and UN bodies will manage in case of a crisis. In that situation, we shall send out very strong appeal to the, to the, to the UN to see that they really focus on these refugees. Because we don't have the money as a government. We are, our budgets are very lean. We cannot look after refugees and also look after our citizens. That is a clear position. We have given them where to stay, but the United Nations must give them supplies, give them provisions that make them live. It is not our government to do that. The World Refugee Day is to be celebrated under the theme Everyone can make a difference and everyone counts, with emphasis put on including refugees in the COVID-19 